season. That saw a total of 30 named storms. Scientists are warning this summer is also going to be unusually active. During a recent trip to the headquarters of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, President Biden emphasized the urgent need for all hands on deck. I'm here today to make it clear that I will insist on nothing less than readiness for all of these challenges. We're going to make sure the men and women of FEMA and our other key agencies have everything they need, everything they need, because they've got an incredibly difficult job. So to that end, Biden announced FEMA would double the amount of funding that helps cities and states prepare for extreme weather. But even with this new financial assistance, are FEMA agents, the responders who answered the call to virtually every national emergency this past year, equipped and ready? Well, according to anonymous employees who spoke to The New York Times, the agency has never been stretched thinner than right now. Just 3,800 of FEMA's nearly 14,000 emergency workers are available to respond if disaster strikes. That's down 30 percent from last year. So even if President Biden insists we're doing all we can to get ready for what may be many high impact storms, can we ensure that FEMA has enough manpower to clean up in the aftermath? Joining us now, Craig Fugate, who served as FEMA administrator under President Obama. It's always good to see you, although usually we're talking about disaster. So here we go again. Should we be worried, do you think, that FEMA employees are talking anonymously to The New York Times and saying that the agency doesn't have the manpower it needs? Well, I think if you look at all of the deployments, uh, you know, Deanne Criswell, the new administrator, has acknowledged the fact and, and, and is looking for ways to give people some downtime as, you know, COVID is, is progressing. The vaccination sites are now starting to wind down uh, before the first storms hit. But this is a perennial question that FEMA faces, and, and probably this year worse than ever, um, is the serial deployments where they literally have to pull people off of older disasters to go to the next one. And while that means they can respond to the next hurricane, work that they had been working on before will get shut down until more people are brought on board. So I get the question then becomes, what do you do about this? Because do you just throw money at it? Do they need to train more people? I mean, uh, again, you know, we did see this with COVID. There's only so much one individual can do before they need a break. We see it with whether it was in the hospitals with COVID. We, we see it every year. There's a bad fire year in California and the firefighters are absolutely exhausted. What do we do? Well, we're seeing the increase in disaster response. I think there's several things. First thing is this hurricane season. I know that FEMA is going to look at trying to get people breaks, but also be prepared to pull people from older disasters to go to more current ones. Longer term, I think it's continued to increase funding to the state and local governments so they have more capability to respond to disasters. And we need to look at FEMA's workforce. Uh, FEMA hasn't really grown their permanent workforce since I was FEMA administrator. Yet the workload continues to increase. And I think we need to you know, have a frank conversation about FEMA size, the permanent workforce, and then the disaster reservists who, when you say reservists, you think of the military and they get all kinds of benefits and protections. But FEMA's reservists don't have that. They only get called up when there's a disaster. Uh, they don't have any workplace protections. And there's not a lot of incentives between disasters to keep them current. So I think FEMA needs Congress to step in and look at making sure FEMA is adequately staffed, not for what's been happening in the past, but for this increasing frequency of both natural hazards as well as other events that FEMA is asked to coordinate on behalf of the federal government. 